So if you've ever been out shooting a scene and you've captured multiple great images and you wish you could just blend them all together, this is the video for you. If you're a photo purist, tune out now because you will not like this video if you do not want to combine multiple exposures into one. Hello everybody, my name's Austin James Jackson. I'm a professional photographer. In today's video, I want to show you guys how to combine multiple exposures into one to create more compelling photos. Now this is a really, really common landscape photography technique. If you're new to landscape photography and you didn't know that, now you do. So many professional photographers are using this technique because they want to capture maybe uh, the great sunset clouds and the great light hitting the peak, um, as well as maybe they want to get the sun in the corner, whatever it is. Most photographers are using multiple exposures to create an image. This can also look like a focus stack um, or it can look like a time blend, whatever it may be. There's literally so many reasons that photographers use this. And if you don't know how to do it, you ought to learn right now. It's really easy to use. All you need to do is have Photoshop or another photo editing program with layers and layer mask support. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys in Photoshop because it's by far the most popular program in it. I think it is the easiest way to do this. Let's go ahead and jump right in there. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to combine multiple exposures to create more compelling compositions. So I've got my photos here loaded into Lightroom. Uh, whether you're doing this in another software or you're just loading it straight off of like the finder on your computer, this is how you're gonna do it. So I've got my photos uh, organized just like this. You can see I have one photo, two photos, three photos, and the fourth photo where the sunlight is hitting in different places. Now this technique is going to work for things like focus stack when the sun's hitting in different places. Maybe you want uh, the clouds blended with a blue hour or whatever you want. This is going to work for anything. This is just the example I'm showing you where the light is hitting in multiple spots. And ultimately I want the light to be hitting in multiple. Like on this photo for example, I like how the light's hitting this rock, but it's not hitting this rock up here. So I want to kind of blend the best of both worlds. So I'm going to click on all of these. I'm going to hold command while I click on each one. That would be control on a PC. And I'm going to go up to photo. I'm going to go to edit in and I'm going to scroll down to open as layers in Photoshop. You are going to click that and it's going to load out into Photoshop. Now once it loads out, it's gonna look something like this. You can see you've, we've got all four photos over here on the right. As I toggle the eyeball, it shows all of the layers, um, showing the layers below when I toggle that. So you can see, um, or maybe you can see, let's zoom in here so you can see this a little bit better. As I toggle this, I wanna show you guys, see how the trees are in a slightly different spot each time. I'm not sure what happened with my tripod but the trees are not in the same spot. We wanna be sure to line that up, otherwise our blend is not gonna look good. So what we're gonna do is we are going to hold shift. Uh, first of all, you're gonna select the bottom layer, then you're gonna hold shift, click on the top layer. You're gonna to go to edit, and you're gonna to go to auto align layers. You're gonna do auto, and you're going to hit okay. What that's gonna do is it's gonna align all of those layers so they're perfectly lined up. It works like 99% of the time in Photoshop, just perfectly, uh, very rarely do I ever have issues, so it'll most likely work on your photo as long as they are pretty similar. Sometimes it may take a second, but once it loads out, all four of these photos will be perfectly lined up with each other. And we will be able to see that here. Let's zoom in, I'm doing Command Plus to zoom in. Let's go back down to these trees and we'll toggle each one. Now you can see each photo is in the exact same spot. Now we're gonna zoom out. Okay, so now we need to decide what we want from each photo. Uh, and we can honestly just start from the top and work our way down. So the first thing uh, from this photo here, I want to get the light on this foreground rock. Maybe the light over here too. I'm not sure if I have a better one. Yeah, let's get the light that's hitting right here as well. So how we wanna do this is we're gonna use what's called a layer mask. Now you can apply a layer mask by clicking this button here. When the layer mask is white, everything on the layer shows completely through. If it's black, nothing on this layer shows through. So you can see now that I have a black layer mask, this layer is totally non-existent, nothing is showing through. So the best way that I like to do this is to create the black layer mask, which can be done by holding Alt Option as you click on the layer mask button, and it creates a black layer mask. It totally gets rid of this layer. But remember, there was a few things we wanted on that layer, so we can shift click on the layer mask here to hide it, essentially, basically disabling the layer mask. So I'm looking at what we want. Again, we wanna paint this area right here, and I wanna paint this area right here. So I'm gonna go in with a brush, brush tool, you can hit B on the keyboard to get it. Uh, I'm going to use a white color. I'm going to use a hardness of 0% and a size is gonna to be totally dependent on your photo. 
You can use the opening and closing brackets diagonal to the delete key to increase or decrease the size. I'm gonna paint this in at 100% opacity and I'm just going to start painting here. So you can see that's looking pretty good. Just catch those trees a little bit. Now I can quickly hit X to switch back to black if I paint it over into an area that I didn't want, like right there. I can hit X again to bring the white brush up. And we'll just hit that. Now we don't wanna hit this area over here. I think, yeah, we wanna probably zoom in on this area right here so we can make sure that we catch the light just right. And I'm gonna just keep hitting X and going back and forth until I'm really happy with what things look like. And that's looking pretty good for me. So now you can see with this layer, this is essentially what we've added. Now we can go on to the next layer here, which is adding all of this. So you can see when I toggle that off, it's showing what is being added. So uh, up here, I think is what looks good on this next layer. So I'm gonna do the same thing. With a layer mask, I'm going to hit the Alt Option button and click it so it's all black. Then I'm gonna go in and I'm just going to paint with my white brush and get that nice light that's hitting up here. I'm gonna shift click on the layer mask to make sure there's nothing else that I wanna get and maybe just right here on the edge. So let's go ahead and hit that, just like that. Okay, now we're gonna go to the next layer. And the next layer, you can see what is, what we wanna show through from this layer, I guess, um, is honestly just the top of this rock. So if I got rid of that layer, this looks pretty good right now, um, but I think I want to get the top of the rock from this next layer. So let's go ahead and hit Alt Option, hit the Layer Mask button and I'm going to paint with white. I'm gonna paint just up here, just like that, and I can hit some of the sky if I want to. You wanna make sure, you, again, that you're using a 0% hardness brush because if you use a harder brush, it's going to be very obvious where you've made these changes. So now you can see just like that how we have added all of these things in real quick and real easy. Now I just wanna make sure that there's not a better part where there's light right here uh, in any of these photos. I'm going to shift click here, not that one, uh, not that one, and not that one. I think that's probably about as good as we're gonna get. So now that you have this done, um, you could simply either just hit Command S or Control S or go up here, go to File and Save As. You could just save it and send it right back to Lightroom on one, DxO, Capture One, Luminar, whatever you're using to edit, you can send it right back there, or you can continue your edit in Photoshop. Now, if I'm gonna keep editing in Photoshop, what I like to do is merge all visible by doing Command, Alt, Shift, and E. Um, and that's Control, Alt, Shift, and E on a PC. What that does is it merges all visible, so now we can just title this Background, and we now have a background layer that is totally functional by itself and you can just start editing just as is. So that's how you go about combining multiple exposures to create a better composition. Alrighty folks, well that is all that she wrote. Now you guys know how to combine multiple exposures to create more compelling photos. Hopefully this is helpful for you guys. If you have any questions about the whole process, please feel free to drop them down below. I'd love to help you guys out. Uh, I wanna make sure that you know how to do this really, really well because it's a crucial thing to know if you are a landscape photographer because so many people are doing this these days and it's really gonna help you to bring your photos to the next level. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you like this video or if it was helpful for you and we will see you guys next time. Thank you so much, bye-bye.